Hello and happy Tuesday. My name is Tess Miller. Through my seminar and coaching business, Wings Unfolded, I strive to help professionals who are ready to transition from the life they used to want to the one for which they were made. I believe that life is a series of transitions, whether in mind, body, or spirit. We're constantly developing and growing. The transitions can be scary and challenging at times, especially when what used to make us happy just isn't anymore. And sometimes we can get stuck not knowing what our next best steps might be. My intention is to help as many people as possible through their life transitions by sharing how I'm navigating my own. Through these videos, I offer insights, tips, ideas, and maybe even some courage to get through the times in your life when you're feeling stuck and not sure what to do next. So it's been a whole year since the pandemic really rocked our world and made us change the way that we do things. And I've been noticing that a lot of people have been sharing their own pandemic stories and reminiscing, I guess, on how their lives have been affected by the pandemic and how, you know, we're not out of the woods yet, but at the same time, we are beginning to see that light at the end of the tunnel. And there's one technique that I noticed myself using throughout the year that really has helped me um, and I wanted to share that with everyone today. It's a technique that I discovered when I was actually five. Um, I was in my bathtub as a five-year-old, and um, I, I have this memory that there was something that I felt really bad about. I had done something, I don't know, you know, what, what do you do as a five-year-old? Um, you left your toys out or, you know, something like that. But I was feeling a lot of shame and guilt about something I'd done or said. And for some reason, I started thinking about um, if this feeling would last. It was a very intense feeling for me. And I wondered how long it would last. And I wondered if it would last into my adulthood. And, um, and then I started thinking about my future self and what I would be like and what would my future self think of me as a five-year-old. And as I thought about that, I sort of started asking my future self, what, what do you think of me? You know, just kind of thinking about, well, if there is a future version of me out there, that must mean that, you know, she exists now, sort of. And so what does she think of me? So I started talking to my future self and asking her um, what she thought of me. And all I got back in that, in that moment was love and support, just pure love and support. And I realized then that that was such a powerful support system to have, to know that I would always ultimately be there for myself. You know, in fact, I realized in that moment, I am the only person who will be there for myself for the entirety of my life. I'm the one that's witnessing everything that happens in my life and will know everything that has happened in my life um, for the entirety. So, you know, knowing that I could call upon my future self to send me love and support, you know, just really um, made me feel really good. And it made me realize too, that my future self already knows what happens to my present self. So that was another thing I could call on my future self to tell me, am I gonna get through this? And of course, duh, yeah, the answer is gonna be yes. So anyway, I, I made a pact with myself as a five-year-old that I would visit myself at various stages of my life throughout my life in order to keep sending that love and support to myself. 
And ultimately, what I've come to understand through this self-connection process is that um, when I feel acknowledged and validated, it actually activates my own internal healing process, no matter what life throws at me, whether it's, um, whether it's not getting the job that I might have wanted or whether it's a pandemic. Um, so anyway, as time went on, I had various conversations with myself um, in the future and also in the past. And I noticed myself on the anniversary of really big life moments, whether they were good or bad, I would send words of praise or, or loving vibes to myself. And of course, over the last year, I did a lot of that. And I'm doing that now um, to myself from a year ago, really sending her so much support and telling her it really is going to turn out okay. Um, and then also, if I'm ever reminded of a past event from my childhood, I will connect in and encourage myself to just keep going and just to reassure myself that everything surely does turn out just fine. Um, and this helps me whenever I stumble into new rough patches in my life too, because I know that there's a future version of myself out there who's sending me love and support and words of encouragement. So anyway, over time, I would continue to ask myself not only for words of encouragement, but also advice. And it was like connecting into a, a higher, more mature version of myself. Um, and I would always come up with solutions to my current problems that, I, you know, in the moment that I'd come up with these solutions, it would feel like, man, I never would have thought of that. But, you know, it's kind of silly because, of course, I am thinking of that. It's just that in a roundabout way, it's coming from a future version of myself or a higher version of myself, a, a version of myself that that has a little bit more life experience and connection to what is best for me. Um, and then other times I might meditate on a past experience and connect in with my inner child. Um, doing inner child work like this, where you meditate on a younger version of yourself, is a way that you can do some inner healing work. You can console a younger version of yourself. You can also look at past experiences um, from a new perspective, from an older version of yourself. So that can be such a great way to heal the things from our past that we really want to be healing. Here's an example. Um, last week, I went in to our local lab because I had my yearly appointment with a doctor and I, she wanted me to do some blood work. So I went to the lab and I was all ready. I'd done my fasting and everything and I was glad that I was done with the fasting. And um, when I got there, they told me that they never received the paperwork for my lab work. So I couldn't get my blood drawn. And I was so upset. I was just, you know, really irritated that, you know, here I did all of the work on my part to fast and be thinking about it all week long. Okay, I need to remind myself that I have to fast on Thursday night. And then to have it come for, you know, nothing. You know, I didn't get my blood drawn, which means I have to fast again at some point. So I was really, really in, irritated that I did the work on my part, but they didn't do the work on their part. So all of these triggered feelings came up for me. And when I realized that I was kind of stewing about that, I started to ask myself, okay, what's going on here? I realized it was a really old emotion for me to be experiencing this, you know, I did my end of the bargain. Why didn't they? And so I sat down with myself and I asked myself for some memories of, you know, a similar feeling that brought up a similar feeling for me. And in those memories, I saw myself doing group work in, in elementary school or in middle school and in high school. 
And in group work, the feeling I always got was that I would be paired oftentimes with people who didn't do the work. And they knew that I was the kind of person that was committed to doing the work. So I would end up doing all of the work. And I really resented that. I resented the fact that I couldn't rely on any of my group partners to uphold their end of the bargain and do what they said that they were going to do. And if I wanted my grade to stay the same as it was, I was going to have to take on that work. So a lot of old feelings got got triggered with that. You know, I really grew to dislike relying on other people. So I became very independent over the course of my life because, you know, if I did it myself, I was usually going to be very happy with the results. But there have been times over the course of my life when I've had to rely on other people, whether it was this blood draw or whether it was collaborating with other musicians. So, you know, what I noticed is that my old feelings were definitely getting triggered. And I, you know, I also realized that um, when my old feelings get triggered in these situations, oftentimes what happens for me is I'm actually looking for confirmation that my feelings are valid. You know, so I start looking for, we'll see, they did disappoint me. See, that justifies how I'm feeling. And I start looking for other things that are going to trigger me too. And guess what? When you start looking for things, you're going to find them. So in the case of the lab paperwork, I reminded myself that there is a pandemic happening right now still. And this doctor is new to me. She doesn't you know, we don't have any past history with each other. And I also knew that she was going on maternity leave that week. So there's a lot going on in that practice. So I started to see things from the doctor's office point of view. And that, that sort of helped me see like, well, it kind of makes sense that there would be an error on their part right now. I might just have to call them. Like they weren't being lazy. They were likely overwhelmed on their end of things. So the least I could do was forgive them and just give them a call later. Later, I connected in with the younger version of myself who was feeling frustrated and irritated about being held back um, in life by others who weren't doing their work. And I acknowledged and validated her feelings. You know, I told her, well, no wonder you felt that way in the school group projects. You know, that's really frustrating to not be able to rely on your peers to do the work that they say they're going to do. And then I asked her what she needed. And what she told me is that she needed to feel like she could move forward in life without having to rely on other people. And I asked her how she felt about the work that she she does and that she did back then in her life. And she said that she enjoys and values doing quality work. That's a huge, huge value for her. And then I asked her, how does it feel to know that you always do your best to follow through with whatever you say that you're going to do? And she said that it feels really good. It honors that value for her. And she knows that she would never do that to anybody else and let them down. And I asked her how long she wanted to feel angry about, you know, this whole lab situation and other people letting her down. And she said, not very long, you know, that younger version of myself realized that holding on to that was actually what was holding her back. And so in a few minutes, I noticed myself being able to let go of how I was feeling and I could get on with my day. And I also sensed that not only in the present moment could I start to move forward again, but I also healed a little bit of myself from the past that needed a little bit of that healing work. And what's awesome about that is that when I heal my past, I heal my present and then when I go forward into the future, I go forward a much um, 
more healed version of myself, basically. I bring all of that work with me into the future. So I have two exercises that are related to having conversations with yourself that you can try. You can, of course, feel free to revisit this video or write these steps down now as you're watching. So the first exercise I call me party. And with this one, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a moment to sit comfortably. You're gonna close your eyes and breathe deeply and put your attention on your heart space. And then what you do is you invite all versions of yourself to join you in this space. And you imagine yourself you know, walking towards you um, and you're at various stages of your life from kidhood to more present versions of you to even future older versions of you. And then once you've called in all parts of yourself, you imagine the various ages of yourself having conversations with each other. I did this exercise this morning and it was really fun because I saw my six-year-old self, who had just lost her blankie, having a conversation with a version of myself that was in her 30s. And my 30-year-old self was really consoling my six-year-old self and telling her it was going to be okay and asking her to talk about whatever feelings were coming up for her. I also saw various um, ages of myself celebrating finishing my doctorate or celebrating a great performance or, um, you know, coaching myself around going for a job. Um, and this might be a bit morbid, but I also saw versions of myself standing around my own deathbed, um, offering encouragement and support. So I kept envisioning the various versions of myself interacting, conversing, and supporting each other. So once you've done that, once you've spent some time seeing those versions of yourself conversing with each other, you can then ask all the versions of yourself to sit in a circle around you. And you can think about whatever's going on in your life right now in the present and ask them, ask all the versions of yourself what you might need to know in this moment, know about yourself, or know about what you want and you know try not to think of think you know don't use your head to think of an answer try to let the answer come from your heart or just kind of pop into your head let it let it occur to you or maybe you want to just let yourself feel for that answer it might not come in words but in a feeling or it might come in as a picture for yourself but just allow it to come in. And when I did this with myself this morning, the answer I got back was to keep going forward. You're right on time and keep trusting yourself. And that was exactly what I needed to hear this morning. It was very, very helpful. I knew that I needed to hear that because of the way my heart space responded. I felt a lot more open I felt more excited about what I was going to do today, and I felt a lot more joyful. So that's, you know, one way that you can um, think about in terms of, you know, how do I know if this is the right answer for me? How do I know that this is really coming from the other versions of me? Check in with how your heart space responds. And then after that, you can thank all of the versions of yourself for giving you that information or that message and then take another deep breath and open your eyes. So it's a very simple exercise. It doesn't really take all that long. The second exercise is one that I call emergency connection. And for this one, what you end up doing is you think about um, whatever is, you know, energetically or emotionally charging you in that moment, you know, something has happened and um, it's kind of a shock to your system. It might be a positive or a negative charge, by the way. And what you do is you call on either a younger or an older version of yourself to help you through that moment. 
when I am experiencing something that is like an old emotion, like I shared earlier about, you know, the blood draw and those old feelings came up for me. If it's an old emotion, I will call on a younger version of myself to help me through that situation. But if there's something going on in my life where I am really uncertain about what I want to do next or what I need to do next, that's when I'll call on a future version of myself. So like in exercise one, what you're going to do with this one, the emergency connection, is you're going to sit comfortably, close your eyes, um, take some deep breaths, and then invite either the past version or the future version of yourself that you need to talk to in that moment. And if it's a past version, you can ask them about the trigger that's happening in that moment, where those feelings are coming from, where those beliefs are coming from, or those values. And if you're not sure about values, I do have a value exploration activity on my website. Um, if you go to www.tess-miller.com, you'll find under the um, under the coach tab that there are some resources there that you can you can look at. You'll find my core values exercise, um, and that'll help you know you know when you're not honoring a value in your life and what what you can do in that moment when you're being triggered by something is to figure out, okay, what value wasn't honored and what can I do now to honor that value? Whereas if it's a future version of yourself that you need to call in because you're not sure what to do next, you can ask your future self, what do I need to do right now in order to feel safe and secure and wait for the answers to come? Um, and you can, of course, ask your past and, and future versions of yourself any other questions that seem appropriate at the time. So for both of these exercises, uh, consider writing down what comes to you because it's really fun to come back and visit these conversations with yourself. The messages that you get from yourself are messages that are really timeless in a lot of ways. You might want to revisit them at other times. So um, when you connect in with yourself, you're actually deepening the relationship you have with yourself. And when you do that, you really set yourself up to trust yourself on a deeper level. And when you trust yourself, you can stop looking to other people for guidance because ultimately you are the person who knows best for you. You are the one who has all of the right answers for you. Getting other people's opinions is of course valuable. It can be helpful and validating to hear from someone else what you've already been thinking or feeling. But at the same time, if you're getting someone else's opinion and doing something the way that someone else thinks that you should be doing it, you might end up be setting yourself up on a path that's not quite right for you. And over time, you might disconnect yourself from knowing what you truly want in your life. So trusting in ourselves is about believing that the answers that we are looking for are already here inside of us. So calling on your past and future self is a way for you to get to those answers a lot faster. As you know, or may know, or will now know, my focus word for 2021 is freedom. And I've been exploring what this word means to me through these weekly topics that I share. And my, my sense of freedom by having these conversations with myself is that I am freeing myself to know that I, I have my back and that I have the answers within myself. I'm freeing myself from having to look outside of myself for what I should do. And I know that I can rely on myself to listen, validate, empathize, 
and have compassion for whatever I'm going through. And I know that I can encourage myself to keep taking the steps toward becoming the best version of myself so far. So I'd love to hear how this message resonates with you. If you'd like to help me out, please like and or share these videos with other people in your life who would benefit. And if you want more free stuff, please subscribe to my weekly email. You can do that by going to my website and filling out the contact information on the homepage. And if you're ready to embark on some transitions in your life, consider signing up for a Test Your Wings complimentary session. You can do that on my website, www.test-miller.com. You go to services, click on the Test Your Wings complimentary session and book a time on my calendar. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube, LinkedIn, all of those usual places and um, connect with me there. You can send me a private message if you'd like. And remember, it's okay to be stuck, but you don't have to stay there. Take care and have an awesome week.